Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and we're in day two of the sixth annual Global Education Conference. We're so delighted to have Casey Fried Jennings here, co-founder of the Documentary Group and senior producer of Goal Rising. Welcome, Casey. Welcome. Thank you. Really delighted that you're here. Lucy Gray and I welcome you, and we thank our sponsors and supporters for this conference. We just cannot express how appreciative we are of these groups and their noble purposes and their willingness to help make this event happen. Special thanks to VIF and TEZ as major sponsors this year and Global Campaign for Education and Iron USA as stalwart continuing sponsors who helped to found the conference. Those of you who are participating live now get to indicate where you're located in the world. So look for the star icon to the left of the map. Click on it. It will open up and give you some additional options. You want to click on the star again or smiley face and click on the map. And then please feel free to put your location, time, temperature in the chat. It's always fun to see where, where people are. Wow. Okay, and while you're doing that, I'm going to briefly introduce Casey. Casey Fried Jennings is co-founder of the Documentary Group and senior producer of Girl Rising, managing the educator program, among other responsibilities. She was at ABC News for 20 years, beginning in the London Bureau, where as producer for Nightline, as a producer for Nightline, she covered Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. She later relocated to ABC News Atlanta Bureau, focusing on the southern United States and national politics. When World News Tonight with Peter Jennings launched its groundbreaking and award-winning series, The American Agenda, Casey was one of its pioneering producers, specializing in social policy issues. She went on to produce for the, time, for the prime time news magazine, Program 2020. She also has close affiliations with a number of nonprofit organizations, including Concern Worldwide and Teach for America. She serves as vice chair on, of the board of WIN, an agency that serves homeless families. It is on the advisory board of SOLA, School of Leadership Afghanistan. Casey, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's wonderfully exciting, and it's just great to be part of a conference um, and have the opportunity to talk to educators from across, across the globe. Um, though admittedly, it feels a little strange to be here in my cocoon, um, talking to no one and sort of everyone, but it's it's very exciting. Uh, sorry, my phone is ringing here, and I'm trying to shut it up. Um, thank you, and first of all, thank you so, so much for inviting me, um, Steve and Lucy, and of course, Ed um, from GCE and IRON, who's really responsible for me being here, and I'm very grateful for that. He's been a huge, huge supporter of Goal Rising. Um, and by the way, before I get started, if you guys who are listening, if you find Scroll Rising as compelling as Ed does, there's a great online conversation to be joined later on, I hope, um, please, on Iron. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited and so pleased to have the opportunity to introduce you to Girl Rising here today. Um, I want to introduce it as a film that tells the stories of nine unforgettable girls from around the world. And in a few minutes, you'll get to meet one of them up close. We'll show you one of those stories. And as a global campaign for girls' education, and I hope as a very powerful and empowering teaching tool. Um, among the many things that are so exciting about Girl Rising is that, above all, it's an opportunity for all of us. It's an opportunity. Uh, to be part of a solution to an overwhelming problem, and that's global poverty, and it affects us all. But this is the exhilarating thing, that while the problem is daunting, um, and it certainly is, there's a solution, and, there's a, and it's right there in front of it, us, and that solution is education, which I'm sure doesn't surprise many of you, but particularly it's girls' education. Um, 
before I get go too much started further here, I should probably give you just a little bit of background about Girl Rising. And even before that, given who I'm to, speaking to, I want to emphasize, as you've heard, that I am not an educator. Um, I'm just a journalist, and so despite this esteemed forum, I hope you'll understand if I talk, tell Girl Rising story and talk about Girl Rising story from the perspective of, of a journalist. So. This is the story, the Girl Rising story. It started several years ago. When we at our documentary company, the documentary group, we were researching global poverty. And we did what journalists always do. We asked a lot of questions. We talked to lots and lots and lots of really smart people, way smarter than we are. And we, and they knew lots more than we did. And what they told us, the policy folks, the economists, the politicians, the academics, the NGO workers. It was pretty simple and very consistent. If you want to end poverty, they said, educate girls. It was a simple truth. It was very elegant, and it was backed up by the facts. The bottom line we learned was there are more than 60 million girls who should be in school but aren't. And if they were in school, they could help us change the world. Now, the barriers to education, as I know you know, are complicated, and sometimes they're really, really complicated. Early marriage, gender-based violence, trafficking, domestic slavery, poverty, AIDS, tradition amongst them. But we also know what happens when you confront those barriers, when you do educate girls. They marry later. They have fewer children. They have healthier children. They educate their own children, both their boys and their girls who in turn will educate their children. They stand up for their rights. They'll earn more as adults. Their families and communities will prosper, their economies grow, and the world is a stable place. We know that. Educating girls is very simply transformative. And if you take a look at these numbers, and they're real, you'll see what I mean. Girls with eight years of education are four times less likely to be married as children. A child born to a literate mother is 50% more likely to survive past the age five. Educated mothers are more than two times more likely to send their children to school, and remember, that's girls and boys. A girl with an extra year of education can earn 20% more as an adult. And get this. If India enrolled just 1% more girls in secondary school, its GDP would go up by $5.5 billion. So if you can get girls in school, and if you can keep them there, you can break, you can break cycles of poverty in a single generation. And that's what the experts were telling us, because that's what the evidence was showing them. Educating girls, we were learning, is the best investment of our time. So when we learned all of this, well, it was powerful. It was electrifying to us. At the time, very few people outside the development community were talking about it, which meant we felt that we had an opportunity to maybe even a responsibility to use our skills as storytellers and help spread the word. And if we could, and if we could to fuel a movement that would help change the, word, the way the world values girls. Since then, a lot has happened. We made a film, Girl Rising, that's played in theaters and television throughout the world. And by the way, it's subtitled in 18 languages, and we're very proud of that. And we built a web of partnerships with NGOs, corporations, grassroots organizations, a community of local leaders, activists, students, and educators like you. They've all introduced the film and the campaign to their own networks. They've been raising awareness, and this is important. They've been spurring action. Millions have now seen the film and more are seeing it every day. There's a long way to go for sure, but I'm pleased to say that Girl Rising, along with a number of other really important initiatives, has given people around the globe a way to talk about the power of girls' education and the importance of girls' education. But I believe it's you guys, the educators, the young people that you teach, who will be the key to helping us have greater success, the key to changing minds, and finally, to changing behavior. And that's why it's so exciting for me today to be talking to you. And in just a little bit, I'm going to talk uh, more specifically about the educational tools we've developed. But first, I really want you to meet very briefly 
A few of the girls have inspired so many. The girls whose stories we tell in the film. This is Soka. Soka was an orphan who scavenged for survival in the mass da massive, steaming, dangerous garbage dumps of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Soka is now a student, a top student at a top school, and she's very likely college bound. And Wadley. Wadley demanded to stay in school even though her mother was unable to pay the fees after the earthquake that devastated Haiti. But she just kept coming back, day after day, until finally the teacher just gave up, gave in, and said, okay. And Senna. Senna, who somehow, some way, found beauty and, and poetry amid the poverty and unimaginable squalor of her gold mining town high in the Andes Mountains in Peru. And Suma. Suma from Nepal. Well, you guys will see. Here's her story from the film. So I'm going to show this video. Uh, I'm going to use the YouTube link. If it's blocked for you, I'll put it in the chat and you can copy it. I'm also going to put in a link to the Vimeo recording and um, you can click on that as well. So, uh, I never tire of Suma. I've seen that probably 50 times, but it gives you a taste of a film and a sense of a message. I'd love to show you more, and I'd love to tell you about everything we're doing. Girl Rising's work in the DRC in Nigeria, Girl Rising in India, which has the potential to be really big. Our partnership with First Lady Michelle Obama's Let Girls Learn initiative. But what I want to focus on here today is what we're seeing happening in schools across North America and across the globe. What we're seeing, sorry, I've got to get used to this slide thing. Um, we're seeing how Girl Rising is being used to get students 
talking about the issues that surround girls' education and to get them thinking about their responsibilities as in their own communities and as global citizens. We're seeing how young people have embraced the spirit of girls like SUMA, these girls of courage and determination. It's girls who aren't what's wrong with the world, but girls who could be what is so right, what is so right. Among the many things we've learned as we look around at what's happening is that there are as many imaginative ways to bring girl rising to school as there are imaginative teachers and, and creative students. But we do have a couple of very robust tools in our educa educator program to get folks started, and we're very proud of them. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them here. The first is our Girl Rising curriculum. It's for upper elementary, middle school, and high school students. And you'll see when you take a look, and please do, it can be used to teach almost any subject, social studies, geography, economics, math, history, politics, writing, art. And for American teachers, because I know this is really important, it's also come go the lines. We've also made th three of the Girl Rising stories available for free online. Uh, Roxana in India, uh, Suma, who you just saw in Nepal, and Sena in Peru. The curriculum is free, and it's available on our website, girlrising.com. And um, I'm, we're very excited that to date, more than 3,500 educators from about 30 countries and uh, all 50 United States they have registered for it. And in fact, 10 teachers have signed up since yesterday morning. I try not to be neurotic about looking at the sign-ups, but I do, and I am, and I hope you'll join them. Uh, we've also created uh, an Educator Edition DVD, which includes the full film that's all nine stories, or chapters as we call them, plus more than two dozen additional video extras, and a quite comprehensive teacher's guide. The teacher's guide includes guides to the full film and individual chapters. It includes background information on the girl rising countries and issues like early marriage and forced labor, as well as links to a vast, vast array of additional resources. I think I already said it, but I'll say it again. We are really proud of these two educator tools, and so please check them out, and please let us know what you think. And if you use them, please let us know how you use them. Uh, feedback's incredibly important to us and very meaningful to us. As I mentioned before, we've been really struck by how Girl Rising seems to capture the imaginations of students. When we first talked about bringing Girl Rising into schools, we tended to think of it primarily as a vehicle to teach kids about the barriers to girls' education and about the power of girls' education. We hoped it would raise awareness in the generation coming of age, and we hoped it would motivate young people to take action. And it's all happening, as you can see on the screen here, and that's incredibly gratifying to us. But we've also seen something else, and maybe it's even something more, which to me was surprising, and perhaps it was surprising to me because I'm a journalist and not an educator. But Girl Rising seems to rouse in kids a sense of personal agency, a sense of their ability to affect change in their own lives and in their own communities. And yes, also in the world. I want to give you just a few examples of what we're seeing. Um, here, for example, Pink Bikes. An American couple were inspired by their daughter who had just seen Girl Rising to found this organization. It's an NGO that provides bikes to girls so they can get safely to and from school each day. Just that, the ability to get safely to and from school is sometimes the difference between going to school or not. It's the difference between getting an education or not. It can be the difference between getting out of poverty or not. This fifth grade music ensemble raised $1,500 for girls' education in just one hour playing in the subway in San Francisco. Boys and girls in Ghana marched through the streets of their town rowling for girls' education. This is Josh. He's 13 years old and from Australia, and he's now one of our global ambassadors. He's created animated videos in support of girls' education, and you can see those on YouTube. And this one I just love. The Children's and Davinia James preschool class, preschool, collected 649,200 pennies, enough to educate 130 girls. 
they're screening to schools every week, so it seems. Sometimes it seems like they're every day. Schools of all kinds and all levels. For example, just a week ago, I screened Girl Rising at a wealthy suburban private school. And a day later, after screening a screening of an inner city public school, I was interviewed by two students, both from immigrant families, and both will be very likely the first in their families to go to college. And tomorrow, I'll be speaking to a University of North Carolina audience. I'm going to wrap up very soon, and I'd really be pleased to answer any questions you might have about Girl Rising, about the film, about the campaign, about the education program, about our ambitions. But before that, I want to leave you with two quotes. First, this one from a parent in the United States. Oops, I missed the slide. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now the quote. Uh, this is from a parent in the United States. Uh, the most rewarding part of being involved with Girl Rising is the ripple effect which starts in school and goes all the way to the dinner table. It's overwhelming to me how organic and powerful the conversation has been. And this from a seventh grade teacher in Moscow, Russia. Showing kids that they can make a difference is something we have to do. They're the generation that will change the world. If these students believe they can make a change, then the world will change. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you all will consider bringing Girl Rising to your schools and or to your communities. I hope you'll help us with your talents and skills as educators to continue this really important conversation with a generation that can indeed change the world. I'm Girl Rising, and I hope you will be too. And now I'm very happy to take any questions, and I look forward to taking any questions if you have any. So if you have a question for Casey, you can put it in the chat, type it in there. Or if you'd like to ask it using the microphone, you can raise your virtual hand. It's the third icon over in the participant window by the smiley face and the away figure, the person with the clock. There's a hand icon. You can click on that, and we'll give you the microphone. So Casey, I'm assuming that there are instructions on the website for um, arranging to bring the film somewhere? Yes, absolutely. And there, there's information on the website um, for how to arrange a screening. There's, uh, the curriculum is on the website and available on the website directly, as well as links to um, download the free chapters. Uh, there's also information about how to get the educator's edition. and. Um, if there are any questions at all, anyone can get in touch with us directly at um, either educate at girlrising.com uh, or info at girlrising.com or directly with me at kfj at the documentary group.com. So Casey, Lucy Gray, who's the co-chair of the conference, wanted to know, how do you identify the authors who work with the girls? Um, it was a process. Uh, we had to, I mean, the whole process of choosing the girls, choosing the countries, choosing the writers, was like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Um, the director, Richard Robbins, whose idea, whose concept it was to pair writers with girls, um, was, uh, you know, first, his first criteria was he had to be able to read the writer's work. So we, he had to find writers from countries who wrote in English, or at least were translated into English. In this case, they all wrote in English. Um, they had to, Richard had to feel they had some uh, sense of the story and some commitment to the story. And uh, so it was just a process of reading a lot and talking to a lot of people and discovering who cared as much as we did. Um, about the story. And what was interesting, what was particularly interesting, just to sort of riff on that question a little bit, is that the, the writers themselves made the final se selection of the girls. We, the film team, provided the writers with a short list of girls and a lot of material and information about them. But we were committed to letting the writers ultimately make that decision, um, not only because they needed to, um, because they obviously needed to connect with the girls, but equally importantly, um, the reason to have writers from the girls' country is because they would see and understand things that we would miss and not understand. So there was a very close relationship that developed between girl and writer. Does that answer the question? I think it does, but Lucy says yes. Yes. 
So if you have a question for Casey, please feel free to put it in the chat or to raise your virtual hand. I I went to the page on the website and put it up in the web tour for arrangements for seeing the film. And I put the link in the chat as well. And you might you might also ask for us to take a look at the um, the educator page if you go up to the educator um, stuff and you'll you'll see the links and things there too if that's helpful. Yeah, there you go. So and I don't know what you're able to do here, Steve, but if you are able to scroll down on that page, you'll give folks a sense of what. They have to scroll there. on their own, but, but please feel exactly. free to scroll down, folks. Okay. Lucy wants. Oh, look, I can do that myself. Okay, sorry, go on. I was just getting excited because I saw that. Genuine I excitement. So Lucy says, how has really? your work as a journalist informed your worldview? Well, I think as a journalist, one has the opportunity to see an enormous amount and to meet a lot of people and to um, uh, to learn from all of them. Um, so I think certainly it makes you understand how how uh, how to look at the world from from very many different angles. How to um, to not make too many assumptions. I think it's uh, certainly with regards to, let's take this, with regards to girls' education and, and that sort of thing. If I look back on my experience as a journalist, some of the most exciting moments, most memorable moments had to do um, with school and kids and excitement um, and seeing the different ways in where, how they go to school and how they learn. And it's an insight, whether it's an inner city in this country or it's a school in rural Ethiopia, it's an insight into the way people live and opportunity and thinking. I think that you also learn as a journalist not to assume you know anything um, because usually you don't. And I think that's helpful. <laughs> I think that that's a good thing to know. Um, it's a good thing you very quickly learn how little you know and I think that's important not just as a journalist but as a human being. So Lucy, uh, yeah, go ahead. Please answer the record. No, no, no. I was just going to, is, is uh, this, can you talk about some of the challenges? Is that the, that's the next one. The next one? Well, um, I assume we're talking about the challenges of gold rising. Um, I think there the question was, how do you tell the story? How do you tell the story, which could be very, very depressing, um, but instead is uplifting while being honest and realistic about what the barriers are and what girls confront. And from the beginning, Richard and the team made a decision that this was not going to be a depressing film. I think Richard made a commitment to himself that you wouldn't see a single fly. You know, we're so used to seeing poverty and especially in the developing world, um, kids covered with flies and things like that. He missed one, I think, as I recall, in Afghanistan, there's a single fly or maybe it's, no, it's Egypt. Um, but he was very determined this was going to be a very different kind of film, as will we all, because the purpose of the film from the beginning was to um, be the central tool of the movement, so to be something that was far more than simply a film, but a very powerful tool that could be used by a lot of people. And for it to be really useful, people needed to want to watch it and to be inspired by it. So that was a challenge. Fortunately, it was Richard's challenge, and he was the one who came up with what I think is a, is a brilliant solution, which is telling these stories with use of the writers and um, in the various different ways. He used many, many techniques in telling stories, including animation and other things. There's a very difficult story about sexual violence that he uses wonderful animation to tell and there and creates a story that actually someone of almost any age can watch. And I think that was great a great achievement. Um, obviously some of these places were very difficult to work. Two of the stories, Afghanistan and Egypt were not shot in those countries and the actual girls do not play themselves in those countries, um, in those stories, they're actors who play them. Um, the uh, working conditions for the team could be very, very difficult. But I think always the central um, challenge is telling the story and telling it well. And I think, you know, there was enormous 
enormous thought that went into that and an enormous challenge in doing it. So we actually have someone who wants to take the microphone. Kim, we see your question. We'll come back to you in a second, but we're going to let Liban take the microphone now. Liban, click on the talk button. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm Liban from Somalia. Really, a lot of said the teacher case you presented a useful lesson. And let me share with you um, some about Somalia. Somalia is a country that has experienced excessive amount of political instability during the past two decades. Though Somali girls took some step towards education, but there are pardons still sent in Somali girls. Those obstacles is mainly from parents who believe that women intended to stay at home and catch works like cooking food washing clothes. The minds of Somali parents are full of traditional things like women can to do what men do. They say to you, girls are planning to stay their house until marriage. When you ask this question, why you educate the girls you was born? One of the customs of parents is giving girls men to marriage without notice and conversation so they can't complete education, and this is against human rights. There are small parents who understand the importance of girls' education and get their children, their, their children sufficient education. Last three years, Somali girls are began participating political in the country by believing that they are much energy than men. I conclude my speech this wisdom saying, Girl educated is a community educated. Thank you, Case, for your campaign about girl rising. Well, thank you for your interest. I heard most of that. I'm afraid it was a little fuzzy, but um, I know you were talking about some of the difficulties faced by girls in Somalia, um, which, as we know, are faced by so many girls around the world. But I, I like to hope it's changing. Um, I like to believe it's changing, um, and I do believe if we all put our mind to it and we make it a priority, it can change because we do know, we do know that it's the solution to poverty. We do know that it creates, gives us, it creates a more peaceful world. We do know about all the good things that are in everyone's interest if girls are educated. Um, and, you know, I don't even think you have to, I agree it's a human rights issue a thousand percent. But you don't even have to argue that. It's just in pure self-interest that we should be educating girls. And of course, it's a human rights issue, and we should be doing it for that. But for those who we can't convince of that, we can, I hope, convince them that it's in their interest, and it will make their life better, and their world safer, and more prosperous. Um, so thank you, thank, you for, thank you for joining us, and thank you for um, talking to us about what's happening in Somalia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liban. So uh, Kim asked, what is next for Girl Rising? How do you measure progress? Oh, yeah, measuring progress is really, really difficult for this kind of campaign, and we struggle with that all the time as um, how we figure out how we measure progress. And of course, we're not the only ones doing this. So all progress isn't traceable to us. Um, there are now, you know, there's a lot going on in this space, which is really exciting, including, as I mentioned before, the First Ladies Initiative, Let Girls Learn and 62 Million Girls, which is a wonderful social media campaign that's happening now. There's, um, I mean, there's, just, there's a lot going on that's really, really, really exciting. Um, but what's next for us? Domestically, um, I'm focused on the, the schools and education program because I do believe that's sort of where the, the, the center of the domestic campaign is and should be. Um, I think I've seen, as I said over and over again, and I'm afraid too many times, that we've just seen a capture of the imagination of kids. And this is a generation who is already looking at the world quite differently than the rest, than the older generations. And so I think if we can capture their imagination and attention and inspire them to, you know, to to act on this, I think that's huge and maybe the best thing we can do domestically besides, of course, encourage 
um, decision makers and policy makers and certainly corporate leaders and those in positions of influence to use their influence to put this at the top of the agenda. Um, right now we also have, we've got a, a two initiatives um, funded by USAID in Nigeria and the DRC that I mentioned um, and those are very exciting. Uh, and we're repurposing the film in various ways and creating new content and working with local um, groups there in those two countries. Girl Rising India is a much bigger initiative. Uh, we made an Indian version of the Girl Rising film similar to the original version, but instead of Hollywood actresses narrating the stories, we had Bollywood actors narrating the story, some of the biggest Bollywood actors there are apparently. I don't know too much about it, but they're apparently huge stars and we're very lucky about that. And that aired on um, Indian TV uh, in August. Um, we are in the process of building partnerships there and building a schools program in India and raising money in order to do that. Unfortunately, all of this stuff takes funding. But we um, got started again with a USAID grant there. Uh, we've got a young adult book that will be coming out in about a year, which we're very excited about. Um, and there are you know, a bunch of other things we'd love to do, but again, it all comes down to uh, how we can fund things. We like, we have other countries that have asked us about doing all rising in those countries. It's a question of bandwidth and um, funding and focus. Uh, but we hope to be doing things, you know, we hope to use India actually uh, as a model. If we can make things happen in India, then perhaps we have a model that can be um, tweaked for other countries uh, around the world and we can be truly global. Did that answer your question? Was that helpful, Kim? She may be there you go. Okay, so if you have a question for Casey, we've got just a couple more minutes. Please feel free to put in the chat or raise your virtual hand. Well, I just while well, well, no one has a virtual hand raised or in the chat, I just would encourage all of you to take a look at the um, 62 Million Girls Initiative. It's a, it's a digital yearbook, um, and anyone can join the First Lady and the President and Bono and um, but then Kerry Washington and thousands and thousands and thousands of regular folks uh, uploading their pictures uh, with the hashtag um, I learned X in school, uh, hashtag uh, 62 million girls don't have that chance. Um, and it's, it's really exciting. You can go to 62milliongirls.com and take a look at it look at it and it's a great thing to have your students do because it's a way to get involved and to take action. Um, really easily and it's fun. Okay, so I think we may be done. I'm clapping for you. Okay. There's, if you go hover over the smiley face, there's an applause icon. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, okay. Well, thank that was you. moving thank you, thank and you. greatly appreciated. I think um, you've made a difference. Well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Um, thank you for having me. And of course, please, every, anyone who wants to get in touch with us, if you have any questions or we can be of any help. Thanks to Casey. Thanks. thanks to everybody that's here. We are in day two of the Global Education Conference. We're, we're having a blast. We're going to let you go at this point, give you a short stretch break. At the top of the hour, we have four new sessions starting. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Bye now. Thanks, Casey. Bye-bye. Thank you all.